Hello and welcome to Section 6, Securing Horizon View with SSL Certificates and True SSO. So what are we going to learn in this section? In this section we will discuss the security aspects of VMware Horizon View 7 and in particular how we deliver secure communication not only with the end user clients but also between the different view infrastructure components in the data center. To deliver this secure communication we're going to look at one of the two options available, SSL certificates and the other option VMware True SSO. So now let's move on to the first video of this section and look at how to deploy SSL certificates in your Horizon View environment. So what are we going to learn in this particular video? We're going to start by looking at why you need to deploy SSL certificates in your Horizon View environment. Then we will go through the configuration process including setting up a root CA for use in the lab environment before then installing a certificate onto the View Connection server. Before we do that, let's just talk about why you need SSL certificates for Horizon View. If you are transmitting sensitive information from a website to an endpoint device, you need to secure the information with encryption, otherwise data could become compromised. As Horizon View is essentially like a web service, to which end users connect from their endpoint device to the View connection server, you need to ensure that this connection is secured. In this case, SSL is used to establish the secured link between the client device and the virtual desktop machine although with view no actual data is transmitted. The pixels from your virtual desktop machine are transmitted and if a third party intercepts the transmissions they could potentially see your screen by redrawing these pixels. SSL is also used for communication between the Horizon View components such as the connection servers and replica servers. Having an SL certificate installed is a requirement for Horizon View. We're now going to look at how to deploy our SSL certificate on our view connection server. But before we do that, we're just going to quickly take a look at how to create a root CA. So typically you'll have one of these in your environment. So this is where certificates are issued from. So in a live environment, clearly that will be in place. But if you're running a isolated POC or demo environment, you may not have this role installed. So we're just going to spend a few minutes just quickly showing you how to set up a root CA on a server. So here we've logged into our certificate server in the example lab environment and we've launched our server manager console. So what we'll do here is the first thing is we'll click on add roles and features. Then we see the before you begin page. So we're just going to click next to skip past that. Then we have our installation type. This is going to be a role based feature. Click next to continue. And then we need to select our server from the pool. So this is our hzn-certs.pvolab.com server. So we click next with that highlighted and then we will see the server roles that we can select. So we're going to select Active Directory Certificate Services as the role. Then we can see we're going to add all the features, so role administration, certificate authority management tools and include any management tools if applicable to add those features. So once we've selected that we can click our next button. Then we have our features, so we're not going to actually install any features here, so we can just click next continue then we have our active directory certificate services so it's just some things to note here the name and domain settings of the computer cannot be changed after a certificate has been installed that's because obviously the certificate will change because of the name of the server that's issuing so just make a note of that then we click next to continue so what do we want to install so we're going to install a certificate authority we're going to click next to continue and then we're going to see the confirmation screen. So to install the following roles and services, we need to click install, but also here, restart the destination server automatically if required. So we're going to check that box. It says if a restart is required, then the server will restart automatically without additional notifications. Do we want to allow that? Yes. And once you're happy with that configuration, then we can click the install button. So now we can see that the installation has completed successfully. We'll see a little warning box here and this warning box is because there are some additional configuration steps that we need to complete. So we can click here to configure Active Directory Certificate Services on the destination server. And then we see our ADCS configuration box pop up. So to install the following role services you must belong to the local admins group and to install the following role services you must belong to the enterprise admin groups. So in our credentials here, we're going to put our administrator, so our domain slash our administrator account. We can change that if you want to. Click next to continue. 
then we are configuring a certification authority. So we select the box and then click next to continue. Then specify the setup type for the certificate authority. So in this instance, we're going to go for an enterprise CA. So we click next to continue. And then because this is our first certificate, we're going to go for a root CA as it's the first one. Click next to continue. Then we want to create a new private key. So we use this option if we don't have one. So as this is new, we don't. So we click next to continue. And now we need to choose our cryptographic option. So the hash algorithm for signing the certificates, we're going to use uh, SHA256. And we can choose our type of cryptographic provider and the key length. And then we can check the box if we want to allow the administrator interaction when the private key is accessed by the CA. So we just go with the default settings there and click next to continue. Then we need to specify the name of the certificate of authority. So the common name for this is our PVO lab HZN7 certs. And then that's now had the suffix added of CA. Our distinguished name, our DN is DC equals PVO lab, DC equals Tom, so PVO lab.com. And here's the preview of our DM. So we'll leave all of those as default and then click next to continue. Then we see our specify the validity period. How long do we want this particular uh, certificate to be valid for? So we can choose days, weeks, months. So we're just going to go with the default five years and then click next to continue. Now we see the specify the database location. So where's the database for the cert log going to sit? Windows System 32 cert log is default. So we'll leave that as the settings there. And then we see our confirmation screen. So if you're happy with everything that has been configured, we can click configure. We can click previous or go back to any of these if we need to change something. We're happy, so we'll click on configure. And now we see that our configuration has succeeded. So all we need to do now is click the close button and we can also click the close button on add roles and features wizard. And then we'll see here, if we scroll down on our server management screen, the ADCS has now been installed. We have an error on the services that just needs to start the services. And that is the first part of our configuration completed. So that's our root CA. This is not something necessarily you will need to do in a production environment, but just for our example lab environment, you may need to do this for a proof of concept or a demo environment. So now we've done that, the next thing we need to do is switch over to our connection server and install the certificate on the connection server. So we've now switched across to the console of our connection server. And in this particular case, our view connection server is our HZN7-CS1 machine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to import our certificate. So we are going to, first of all, run the MMC, the Microsoft Management Console. And then we're going to file, we're going to add and remove snap in, we're going to select certificates, click add. Uh, the snap in will always manage certificates for, we want the computer account. So we want the computer rather than whoever's logged in and the, or the service account. Click next, local computer, so this particular machine, and then click finish. So now we have our certificates snap in added and we can click on OK. So now we go back to our MMC, we can see here we have our certificates local computer. So what we're going to do here is on personal, we're going to right click all tasks, request the new certificate. Then we see our before you begin. So just verify the following, we're connected to the network and that we have the right credentials to be able to obtain the certificate. Click next to continue. So here's our Active Directory enrollment policy. We can expand that if you want. There's a policy ID. We can look at the properties on that. So we're going to click next because we're going to use that enrollment policy. So now we see our certificate enrollment screen and the ability to request certificates. So it says here you can request the following types of certificate. So a computer certificate, which is what this is. What we also need to do is, well, we can see that it's available, is click the down arrow on details and then we need to click on properties. So then we see the certificate property. So the first thing we need to do is give this a friendly name, which will be VDM. We can give this a description if you want. 
in subjects um, we can give us a subjects name so we can pick one of those so in this case we'll go full dn to so dc vo lab dc equals com so we can add that so that applies to anything that uh, matches that criteria we don't need to worry about extensions what we do need to do is private key and then under key options we need to make this key exportable and then on the certificate authority just ensure that our root ca is showing because that's where we're going to get the certificate from so we're going to enroll from that server so if you're happy with those options we can click apply click ok so now we have all our details here so the next thing we need to do is click enroll so that will now go and enroll us and import the certificate So now we can see that's succeeded. So if we want to click on details, we can see the details of our certificate. We can view the certificate if you want to. There's the details, there's a certification path. So we have our certificate installed. So we can click on finish. Uh, we can also close the MMC console. If you want to save settings, you can. We won't in this particular instance. So as this is our connection server, we just made some changes. The next thing we need to do, because the certificate won't take effect just yet, we need to go in and we need to restart the connection server service. So from the run box, we're going to type in services.msc to launch our services console. Then we just need to scroll down and find our VMware view connection server. So that's currently running. So we need to right click on there selects the option for restart so we're basically going to restart the view connection server so that it picks up the newly imported certificate So now the service has restarted and we've successfully created and imported our certificate onto our connection server.